we're going to talk to a former army reservist who was paralysed in a climbing accident and now he's made history. He's become the first ever person to complete the World Marathon Challenge in a wheelchair. Darren Edwards, who is now also a motivational speaker, completed a gruelling seven marathons in seven days across all seven continents of the world. Can you imagine? Uh, anyway, Darren joins us now. I mean, great to see you. I mean, I, I, I have to say, I can't imagine, A, what possessed you to take on a challenge like this or what possesses anyone to take on a challenge like this. It's so out of my comfort zone, I can't tell you. Why did you decide that you would do this incredible challenge in a wheelchair? I mean, it, it just seems extraordinary. Initially, I think it was a stupidity that probably when the offer was made, so, the, so the, when the offer was made by the person that runs this uh, event once a year, who was looking for somebody to do it with a disability, I uh, just, he said, you know, thought you might be the person to give it a go. And I kind of said yes, without much consideration or thought, really. Um, but I think a serious answer is that since my life changed in 2016, and you know i was paralyzed in a climbing accident it's been a gradual step of rediscovery and kind of discovering what my new limits are and what i'm capable of because i think when you're first injured and you're first told that you're going to spend the rest of your life in a chair you don't know what that life's going to look like um so it's been a gradual process of discovering exactly how capable you can be with a disability whether it's doing a marathon in antarctica in minus 20 minus 25 and you know howling winds but that, you or, know, Aaron, you know, that, that's um, what that's what always astounds me about people like you and i've, and I've talked to you know gotta say over the years many inspirational people who've, who've faced adversity and, and get on with it because if something like that like your climbing accident happened to most of us you do go you can well you can imagine i would go oh you know what do i do now you know it's almost that that life is over style thing to be mm. able to to have the mental attitude to actually pick yourself up and say, right, life is different. How do I make the most of it? How do I reach my limit despite my changed circumstances? How do you have that mental fortitude? You know what? I don't think we know what we're capable of until we're put in that scenario. So you say that you're not sure how you would deal with it. But honestly, I do think it's only once you're in that situation and it's the realisation that, the real tragedy is is giving up. So I knew the day of my accident, I was on the cliffside waiting to be evacuated by mountain rescue. And I was on like a precarious ledge for three hours in total. So I had a lot of time to go through that emotional roller coaster of fear, anxiety, kind of uh, anger as to what had happened. And I knew I was seriously injured. But the point that I reached before I was flown off from that cliff was that the only thing I couldn't do was to give up. You know, the only thing that would really make this a tragedy and really end my life was giving up and, and stop trying to be the same person that loved adventure, that loved a challenge. You know, like I had aspirations to climb Mount Everest to serve with the Special Forces Reserve. So, you know, I was always somebody that had ambition, that had aspiration to take on some of these big things. And I I didn't want that to stop. I wasn't prepared for that to stop. And I wouldn't have been happy or fulfilled or lived a, a life worth living had I, you know, uh, taken the easy route and just and just give it up. So I think we're all stronger than we think we are. That's something I've learned. And we don't know what we're capable of until we're put in a scenario where we need to dig deep and we need to have that resilience and mental toughness. Um, but it's not easy. Everybody has days. I'm sure you two do. We all have days that are harder than others, and so do I, obviously. Um, but this challenge was seven incredibly tough days back to back, but in a very different way to you know, the disability was irrelevant, pretty much. It was just the logistical challenge of reaching seven continents in seven days, the challenge of finishing one marathon and knowing that in 12 hours you'd be starting another one in some cases I think and that final marathon in Miami is amazing yeah absolutely amazing determination uh, just very briefly what was it like I mean sub-zero temperatures quite incredible tell us a bit about the challenge itself 
Yeah, so we flew into Antarctica at sort of four in the morning and the temperature was predicted to be about minus 20 and then you add wind chill on top of that and the wind was growing to about 60 mile an hour gusts. And for someone who can't feel or move below their chest, there was a realistic risk of, of frostbite. So we took a lot of steps to ensure that I was dressed like the Michelin man below the line of my injury. Um, and the wind was so tough that there were, there were moments on that marathon where I was giving it everything I had. I had no more power or strength to give into each turn of the wheels. And you'd have someone who would just walk past you quite casually who was kind of leaning into the wind. They couldn't run, but they were still walking. And they would just cruise past me at a walking pace. And there's me kind of inch by inch making my way back up towards where that plane was. So Antarctica was an absolute, exactly what I thought it would be. A tough, wild, You did it. Incredibly Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Five hours 50. So the slowest marathon of all time. But yeah, I did it. <laughs>